Coming up, a near new coffee machine has died from a power surge. Why does this seem so familiar? And can we fix it? This Breville coffee machine belongs to a friend who said it failed to turn on after a storm. This is the same storm which damaged my Bosch washing machine, but the similarities don't end here. If you haven't yet, go watch that video after this one for important context. To be clear, the cause of this problem is a power surge, or more specifically, a lightning strike. The best method for protecting your devices is unplugging them. Surge protectors, which are rated from 330 volts to anything up to 4000 volts, will do nothing against a 300 million volt lightning strike. Of course, unplugging things during a storm is also dangerous, and not much can be done if you aren't physically able to, or aren't home. I'm not against buying surge protectors, just keep in mind that the protection they offer is limited to what the 70 cents worth of aristas inside it can provide. Now on to the repair. The first thing I notice is the thermal cutout and thermal fuse are both okay. What's more, there is power here even when your machine is doing nothing. It just needs a relay or a human hand to close the circuit. Okay, there's power and it doesn't turn on. We need to dig deeper. Specifically, we'll have to get into this white box. I didn't film taking the back off, but there are a lot of screws underneath the machine. Straight up we are presented with an obvious burn mark and an IC which has blown its top. The unfortunate part is the IC is no longer readable. Without access to a schematic, parts list or an identical machine, there is no way of knowing what it is. What we do have is a parts machine that belonged to the same person. Its plastic Steam One connector had broken due to age. We weren't able to find the replacement part and due to its age, decided scrapping it and buying a new one was a smarter move. As you can see, it's the same model. A quick test and it started pumping straight away. I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that, but we'll push on anyway. There we have our donor board. Can you spot the difference? It doesn't have that surface mount IC. What it does have is a P1075P065 on the other side of the board. The rest of the board is identical, except for this area which includes an optocoupler that the other board doesn't have. We also notice a burnt resistor, the same value as the one in our Bosch washing machine. Looking at the data sheet for the Breville IC, we see it's an enhanced offline switcher. Now the data sheet for the Bosch IC we replaced in the previous video, and it's an enhanced offline switcher. A quick look at the pinouts, and they are different, but functionally do the same thing. I cut the wires on the donor board, but we still need to desolder them. Crimp connectors would also work, but I choose not to use them in a repair like this. Let's fast forward a bit. The wick was doing its job, but I was struggling to get the solder out of the holes. I do have a manual solder sucker tool somewhere, but I was recently given something even better. A ZD8915 desoldering station. It's missing the bits and accessories, so I'll have to make do with the bit it has installed.
Now you'll have to bear with me, I haven't actually used one of these before. The old man had a Hakko 30 years ago, and I probably tried out the foot pedal, but ever since in our workshops we used wick and a manual solder sucker, even on 80 pin ICs. I'll try adding a bit of solder. It worked, that's brilliant. Just to complicate things further, we've got hot melt glue on every wire. If the nozzle was a bit bigger, it would fit over the end of the wire. I've edited most of my hopeless desoldering out. Just one more. Then our donor board is completely clear. Back up at the house and the tedious task of swapping wires over. I'm halfway. I won't bother with the hot melt glue. I don't believe it matters as the wires are secured inside the box anyway. Now this FET, not sure what it's for exactly, but I tested it and it's okay. I'll put new thermal paste on it. That obnoxious noise again. We'll let it heat up and see what happens. And yes, it works. A small amount of leaking out the bottom drain is normal. That's why you should install the drip tray first. Well, there we have it. A $399 Breville Duo Temp Pro saved from destruction. If you found this video informative, be sure to check out my other random repair videos. Thanks for watching.